All right. Good evening, folks. Noting the time, uh, we'll get started. The purpose of this evening's town hall is to share information about a proposed ordinance by the Moraga Rinda Fire District that would administratively change the designation of areas that are currently considered a wildland urban interface fire area to change those to a locally designated very high fire hazard severity zone. Uh, we'll, we'll talk about the difference between those and the purpose and the intent behind it in just a moment. Uh, but what I would like to offer as a, a lead in is, is two things. Uh, one, uh, that tonight uh, I'm going to be giving the presentation with help from uh, Dennis Rain, our emergency preparedness coordinator, our fire marshal, uh, Jeff Isaacs, and Marshall Holbrook, our district clerk. It, it's important to note that the decision to actually um, approve or not approve uh, the proposed ordinance rests with the MOFD board, which will have a second reading of this ordinance before it at our regular meeting next Wednesday at 7 p.m. I, I just offer that up as far as rules of the road, um, that um, if you have a strongly held opinion about whether this, this should or should not be adopted, uh, the, the appropriate way to record that opinion would be via communications to the board, either in person during the um, items on the agenda uh, as part of the regularly scheduled meeting next week, or in writing in advance of the meeting via uh, info at mofd.org, and that will make that available uh, to any members of the public who might be interested in that. Also, for additional information, addition, additional written information, uh, if you look at item 8.6 from the February board meeting of the MOFD uh, board of directors, there's a staff report that includes maps that we'll put up on the screen here in a moment um, that hopefully will be able to answer any, any additional requests for information or, or things you might want further clarity on. Uh, those are available on the MOFD website under transparency, board meetings, agendas, and packets, and it's the, the February regular board meeting where that information is available. So to back up uh, a couple of things of, of how we got here. Uh, in 2019, uh, as part of the triennial fire code update cycle, MOFD adopted progressive amendments to the California fire code that among other things required the removal of combustible material within two feet of a home and a, a number of other things which uh, meet or exceed the minimums that are enshrined in state law. The MOFD has a long history of progressive fire codes going back to the days of Tanya Hoover, who was MOFD's fire marshal in the early 2000s and then went on to be the state fire marshal and eventually the deputy U.S. fire administrator. Those amendments apply to elements of the fire code uh, for buildings or immediate surrounds uh, under the um, previously understood condition that local amendments to the fire code could be made by any fire jurisdiction, which is us, and that that would be essentially the law of the land uh, as it applied to fire code. Two years ago now, the MOFD board on staff's advice adopted a wildland urban interface fire area, which applied additional ember resistant construction standards for new buildings and major remodels to um, a larger area of the district. And we'll get into the, in a minute what that means with regard to zones, but it's important to note that the wildland urban interface fire area designation, which been in, has been in effect for the last two years, is limited in that it only, it only applies additional elements of the building code to construction. And there are, there are some things that it does not do, but it, it's important to note that WUI fire area requires ember resistant construction for new buildings, major remodels, and, and really nothing more. The next thing is that in 2019, a, a, a law was passed, which took effect last summer, that requires that the state laws, the state's fire safety laws, which previously only applied in state response areas, that is areas outside of the municipal boundaries, in our case, outside of Orinda and Moraga. So there are elements of MOFD's jurisdiction that are in the SRA or state response area. However, those are no part of Orinda or Moraga by definition are in those areas. Those are designated as local response areas or LRA. So the law that passed in 2019 and took effect in the summer of 2021 expanded the application of the state's fire safety laws, specifically Title 14 of the California Code of Regulations. It expanded those areas into local response area, very high fire hazard severity zones. So that you see uh, an a expansion of the application of the state's fire safe laws into LRA, local response area, for the first time. Further, in uh, very recently, SB9 passed, which allowed for lot splits and the construction of ADUs in additional areas. SB9 is very specific 
that a lot split cannot occur if that is if the lot split is proposed in a very high fire hazard severity zone and the conditions of the state fire safe laws do not or cannot be met, specifically having to do with dead end roads and areas that lack a circular route of travel. So that is to say, there has been an expansion of the state's fire safety laws into local response area, very high hazard severity zones. And there are now additional places that, a, um, that the state's fire safe laws will apply with regard to a lot split. And, and the last piece of this, which is an important component to understanding, is that the state is mandated by the health and safety code to update the maps showing the where very high fire hazard severity zones exist or apply. They're obligated to update those maps every five years by state law. Those, laps, those maps were last published in draft in 2007 and in their current form in 2009, meaning that the current maps are significantly out of date and have not been updated in 13 years now. Uh, I'll share a screen here to show what those maps look like and, and what we are talking about in this area. This is from the attachment included uh, on the staff report associated with item 8.6 on last month's agenda. For orientation, you see Highway 24 running from right to left across the screen. We see Arinda shown here, we see Moraga shown here, and then Lafayette. The areas outside the municipal boundaries are outside the scope of the conversation today and are shaded out. The areas shown in red, specifically up here in El Toy now, and areas um, in far west of Arinda and, uh, and down leading into uh, or in Indian Valley in Moraga, and some of these areas on the south side of Ladder Wasser Creek uh, in the Downs and Sleepy Hollow and some areas up and around Manzanita. Those areas are shown in red, indicating they were designated and currently remain very high fire hazard severity zones. The areas shown in orange, all around, those were designated in draft as high fire hazard severity zones, one step below a very high, if you will. The action the MOFD board creating the wildland urban interface fire area applied additionally more restrictive building codes in the area shown in orange. And the proposal uh, with the, the LRA very high fire hazard severity zone designation would expand the red that you see on this map to all the areas in orange. That would prevent um, lot splits uh, under SB9 from occurring in those areas if they were on a narrow road, that is a road that is less than 20 feet in width, if they were on a dead end road, or if they were on a road that was not part of a circular route of travel. Um, at some point, the state will produce new maps of their own accord. We've been saying for several years now, because we have been told for several years now, uh, that they will be out in the spring or summer of that year. Um, here we are in 2022, that has not happened yet. And the proposal to make this administrative designation of these areas as uh, very high fire hazard severity zones is taken uh, based on our belief that the, the state's inaction has caused the current maps to be inadequate to represent the current fire threat. We know a lot more about fire than we did in 2009. Fire has done a lot of things since 2009 that we did not expect it to do at that time. We believe this proposal uh, is the best way to address the, the state's inaction with and their delinquency in producing the new maps. It, it's also worth noting um, that at some point new maps will be produced. And when those new maps are produced, there is a process by which MOFD will review and recommend to the directors that they adopt these maps. Um, there is not a, a, a way to reject them, but you can request amendments when those maps come out. Um, and at that time, when the new maps come out, we'll certainly recommend adopting and perhaps adding additional areas um, to, the, uh, to the zones. Uh, a question that has been raised repeatedly uh, about this proposal and, uh, and on this topic is, um, won't changing the fire hazard severity zone designation, won't that have a negative impact on residents' ability to get homeowners insurance? Uh, and that's a very good question. And certainly home, homeowners insurance and access to it cancellations, non-renewals, and rate increases have, have been on the minds of many residents and there are no shortage of documentation and action by the California Department of Insurance that suggests that is a real problem. Uh, the answer to that question uh, of will this designation change our access to insurance or increase our rates is we cannot say definitively. Certainly, there is, it is not possible in a, a market as large and diverse as insurance with 40 admitted carriers and many MGAs and UGAs operating in California, it's not possible to say uh, whether this action definitively will cause increases or will not. 
Um, our conversations with the catastrophic risk modelers at Verisk and CoreLogic uh, suggest they use far more sophisticated models than an administrative designation changing maps that were published in draft in 2007, changing them in 2022 or 2022 that they have been dismissive that that would be a significant input or an input at all in, in how they identify and catalog risk. They use very sophisticated models. They use up-to-date vegetation mapping and sophisticated terrain and weather models to produce predicted outcomes of wildfire spread. So in, in our estimation and our sincerely held belief based on extensive conversations with the folks that do this work, um, is that our, our belief is that this designation will not have a significant impact on insurance. However, it'd be full disclosure, uh, it is not possible to make that statement definitively. And it is possible uh, that there will be instances where this will have an impact on insurance. My belief is, is those will be infrequent and extremely rare, but it is possible. And I think it's important that folks are armed with that information. Anecdotally, folks who have asked us and then have reported back on the conversations They've had either with their broker, or with their carrier, uh, the anecdotal response to date has been uh, definitive that those who spoke with their carrier or with their broker, the answer was that this would not uh, be an element that was considered as they were making underwriting decisions. Um, however, as I said, um, that is anecdotal. So to summarize, uh, the proposed map would be, uh, to the proposed change would be to change the current map, the areas that are shown in orange, change them to red and administratively designate them very high fire hazard severity zones in the interim until state maps are produced at some point um, in, in the future. We don't know when. In order to uh, apply SB9's uh, limitations on lot splits along um, dead end roads, narrow roads and areas that lack a circular route of travel. Uh, it's, it's worth noting that the, the lot split pro prohibitions are limited uh, to only those areas that are very high fire hazard severity zones. There is not a, another administrative way to arrive at this same point. Um, in a nutshell, th that, is, uh, that is the proposal. That is the rationale behind it. And, and the map shows um, the specific areas that would see um, changes uh, should this happen. I, I will finish by saying um, there, there are many things that we as a community can do to reduce our exposure to wildfire risk. Uh, MOFD is committed to pursuing all of them. We believe the answer to the wildfire problem in our community is an all of the above approach. Every little bit done has an additive value. Every time a homeowner clears back that two feet of combusted ground cover, clears their overhanging trees, removes a dead tree, each one of those has an additive value to reducing the community's wildfire risk exposure. And as we move forward together as a community with all of these things, over time, we will see substantial changes in our risk profile. And that this is by far, from my perspective, the work done to reduce risk is the best way that we can reduce the probability of a resident having either a non-renew, a cancellation, or a significant rate increase. And that the work done is our path to fewer insurance-related issues or concerns. Uh, and that an administrative designation that would cause more restrictive measures to apply, uh, that, is a, that is a worthwhile step uh, towards the goal of being a fire safe community. Uh, with that, I, I'm sure there are questions. Uh, we'll go to the chat to take a look at, at what questions have been asked and, and attempt to answer those as best we can. Uh, oh, great. All right. So there was a question asked, will the yellow areas map on uh, the yellow arrows changed to orange and gray to yellow. No, uh, the, the map as shown, uh, apologize, put that back up. Uh, as shown on the map, the areas in orange would change to red. The areas in yellow that are designated as, um, <clears throat> the areas in yellow, which are designated as moderate and the areas in gray, which are designated as unrated, those would remain the same. No, no administrative change is suggested to those simply because um, a high or sorry, a high or a moderate designation triggers nothing in LRA. There, there is no administrative value to changing that designation. In LRA, a very high fire hazard severity zone rating is the only one that has um, implications with regard to uh, application of, of various uh, of the state's fire safe laws. All right. 
Uh, as mentioned before, uh, as Dennis put in the, the chat there, uh, if folks have, have comments, have an opinion for or against, I would encourage you to submit those either uh, in person or in writing during the MOFD morning board meeting next Wednesday or in advance at info at MOFD.org. Comments received prior to the meeting will be included uh, in the packet. Uh, there was a question asking about the age of the map. Um, the map that, that I just showed, those maps were published in draft in 2007. That's the draft map we were showing. And the final versions were published in 2009. Uh, updates have not been published since. The CAL FIRE FRAP folks and land use planning continue to work on the updated maps. Uh, however, they, they have not been published yet. Um, the question about how to learn uh, what area you're in based on your address. Uh, if you're in the city of Orinda, there's a viewer that, uh, that has uh, the ability to do a lookup for very high fire hazard severity zones. Uh, and then for the others, it's, it's based on the map, zooming in on, on the map, it's available. Um, if Dennis or Jeff, if you could please put up a link to the state viewer where the high resolution, high resolution maps are hosted. Um, and, and that the easiest way is to zoom in on the map and identify your, um, your, your location. Um, uh, so a question about spoken comments at this meeting. Uh, no, uh, there, will, there will not be. Um, the, as I said, this is, um, this is a place to share information uh, about it. It'd be appropriate to submit comments to the board as those are the folks uh, who will actually be, um, be voting on the, uh, on the agenda item. Um, there's a question regarding, will this assist, assist the district to obtain additional funding from the, fed, uh, from the feds or the state? Um, every grant we submit includes recognition of areas of the district that are in very high fire hazard severity zones. Uh, obviously with several large projects or late, we've been very successful with those. Um, I, I don't know that, that this will help because we are already uh, identified as a community at risk um, dating back to 2003. We've already been identified uh, by the state on the list of WUI communities. Uh, and as a result of that, and we are an area that has very high fire hazard severity zones in LRA and the SRA already. Uh, I've yet to see an application that asks for a percentage of the community that, that had that designation. Um, so I'm not, I'm not sure that this would assist us in obtaining uh, additional funding. Uh, this question, does this require approval by the town of Moraga as well, or only the MOFD board? Uh, fire hazard severity zone designations are a function of the MOFD board, uh, unlike the fire code, which also goes to the city and town um, for um, ratification. Uh, a, fire code, a fire hazard severity zone would be action of the MOFD board. Uh, there's a there's a comment that there there may be um, there may be issues with uh, depending on the carrier there may be issues with um, with the, with this could affect insurance. Uh, agree that is is definitely uh, a possibility. And and there was a comment that yes you could uh, there it is possible to place more restrictive measures in the in the future fire code. This is a fire code update cycle, and this is a year in which additional uh, fire code restrictions could be put in place. However. Uh, with regard to SB9 and lot splits, um, the fire hazard severity zone, a very high fire hazard severity zone is the only mechanism that can be used to trigger application of the state's fire safe laws um, with regard to a lot split. Um, uh, there's a question, uh, do we expect the state to update the map, um, to map, map, do we expect the update to the state map um, to show the areas in orange would eventually show to red? Um, I, I believe summarizing this, um, is something we are doing, uh, is it likely that a future state map would mimic the action we are proposing now? Um, my personal opinion is that's very likely. However, those, that's unknowable at this point as those maps have not been seen. Um, anecdotally, we have heard reports that the new maps will have much more red than the old maps in recognition of the things fire has done um, in the 13 years since the current maps were produced and that fire spread is more likely. As an example, this year we saw um, fire jump the Pacific Crest over to the eastern side of the Sierra twice. That was the first two times in recorded history that's occurred. Uh, the Dixie Fire, as an example, burned to the eastern side of Highway 395 near Susanville, uh, a very, very long way from it started. Uh, that said, that I should caveat, uh, those statements are pure speculation. We have not seen the maps, um, and we have not, um, we have not, uh, we don't have any way of anticipating what will be on them other than we expect them, they might be, uh, they might be worse than the current, um, or they might be more, um, 
The maps are, are presumed to show expansions of the very high fire hazard severity zones, not reductions of those. Uh, there's a question about um, uh, risk reduction at, at MCC, um, which is a great question. So uh, if, if in the case of MCC, which through a significant um, investment of close to a million dollars, um, put significant amount of time and effort into reducing accumulated fuels and combusted vegetation in their community. And, and so as many other areas of our community have done, work has been done to reduce fire risk, fuels have been removed. Uh, there is nothing about this map uh, in either its current form or the proposed changes that would recognize work done on the ground because the underlying data dates to pre-2007. It is also unlikely on the next round of state maps that community level risk reduction within uh, something the size of the country club of MCC would show up. These are landscape level land use planning maps. The intention behind the fire hazard severity zones is to inform land use planning decisions. These maps were never designed to be a parcel by parcel delineation of risk and they, they lump things in at the landscape level. Uh, anticipating what fire will do when it, when it spreads across a very large area. The underlying data on the current maps was 30 meter resolution, so 90 foot pixels. So any work that was done that, that reduced less than a 90 by 90 box, uh, 90 foot by 90 foot box on the ground simply would not show up. Furthermore, all of the underlying vegetation data is based on aerial collection meaning it does not see the understory. It, it cannot see through an intact tree canopy. So work that has been done to create shaded fuel breaks and to clear out combustive ground fuels and ladder fuels and all of the other things that support destructive wildfire spread in our area, uh, that work simply doesn't show up on these maps. However, it speaks once again to the intent behind the maps. The maps were not intended to delineate parcel by parcel risk assessments. They are a, a hazard severity zone map for land use level planning for with a landscape level view of the uh, of the environment. So no work done uh, work done in a small area would not um, would not show up on these maps, uh, the current maps, uh, nor on the the future updated maps. Just um, just we seem I believe we're caught up on the questions. Is that correct, Dennis? If there's any other um, questions, be happy to happy to answer them. Hey folks, um, respecting everyone's time, I uh, thank you for participating as a reminder. Uh, there is, uh, there will be an MOFD board meeting next Wednesday. Uh, opportunity to, for public comment to be provided uh, exists in advance via info at MOFD.org as was placed uh, in the chat. It's also available on our website. For residents who wish to comment during the, uh, the board meeting, it begins at seven. Uh, you can do so either via a uh, written comment um, or um, when public comment is called for on the agenda item. Uh, as with anything else, uh, comments that are submitted in advance will be included with the board packet um, when it is published and then updated on our website under uh, as we approach the meeting. Everything up until um, five o'clock on the day of the meeting will be uh, will be posted. And then lastly, just as a, a call to action, a public service announcement, um, it, I, I I'm certain uh, we have all noted the lack of rain so far this year. If you look at the south facing slopes in our area, we see the grass, which ought to be getting into the prime of its growing season, is already starting to turn and to cure. Uh, there is no anticipated heavy rain on the horizon. And it is, we've had several significant wildfires already to include a fire last week that went to 88 acres uh, near Lake Shasta, where there should be snow on the ground right now. So this is certainly shaping up. Uh, the conditions are set for, for this to be an early onset to the fire season. And as a reminder, fire season doesn't end until it rains, and that could be November or December. So a quick review of the calendar suggests we, we have a long fire season ahead of us. It is never too early to start preparing your home. As a reminder, for those of you who attended on Tuesday night, 
Uh, that means raking back mulch within two feet of your home to create two feet of bare mineral soil or other non-combusted ground cover, limbing up any decorative privets or bushes that are planted next to your house to create at least a one foot vertical air gap to prevent fire from climbing into those, removing any dead or dying trees, breaking up any clumps of non-irrigated brush that will support fire spread, removing ladder fuels that would allow fire to climb up into a tree and clearing your roadside. So there's at least three feet back, 15 feet up of clearance. If you have not done so already, Republic Services will happily up upgrade your 64 gallon green bin to a 96 gallon green bin and conduct up to four pick pickups of uh, yard waste per year by giving them a call. That information's on our website and the MOFD chipper can be scheduled for service. Uh, information's available on our website. I would encourage folks um, start early, start often. It's a great time to get ahead of these things. There are things like dead trees and ladder fuels and brush and mulch that can be done now because it's not seasonal. And it pretty soon will be time to turn to I'm cutting any dead uh, annual grass and weeds you have to less than three inches. I would encourage everyone to do that. If everyone in the community does their part, if we get our roadsides clear so our evacuation routes are open, will support the rapid movement of the community out. We harden our homes by replacing our vents and we reduce the, the presence of combusted vegetation around our homes. Uh, we do the work in advance of a fire that will allow the firefighting resources that are both organic to MOFD and will flow in from the surrounding areas. We set the stage for them to be successful. And ultimately our goal is that we have no loss of life, we have no loss of property, and we take advantage of the gift of this time we have now, having been made aware of the risk of wildfire through other communities lost, we use that time to prepare our community and increase our resiliency. So I'd ask everyone, please do your part. Uh, as a reminder, comments can be submitted and uh, we look forward to either hearing from you or seeing anyone who has an opinion for or against this proposal. Uh, we look forward to see, um, seeing everyone at, uh, at next week's board meeting who, who has an opinion to offer. And with that, thank you so much and have a great night.